It's time to give props to the king of crops. The U.S. is the world's largest producer of corn, churning out approximately 400 million tons in 2020. One in three acres of corn is planted for export. We make everything from field corn, which is for livestock feed, sweet corn, which is for people, as well as ethanol and bioplastics. Not to mention corn syrup, even fuel, says Caitlin Parsons of the Massachusetts Farm Bureau, a nonprofit advocacy group. The vast majority of America's corn grows in the Midwest, but sweet corn is a farm stand favorite across New England. Some corns are edible because they have a higher sugar content, and that's really the difference between sweet corn and field corn. Family-owned Volante Farms in Needham grows 10 to 12 acres of sweet corn. Owner Dave Volante says 2021's wet summer was tough on the crop. So that's an evidence there of that dry tip. It's just a bad season for pollination, for fertilization, for everything else. And we just snap it off and you're good to go. But that's an, an example of what you will see this season. Volante says, rest assured, only the best corn is culled for the farm stand throughout the growing season. A lot of the earlier varieties are bred more to sustain the cold temperatures that we see in New England that they're growing in April and May and June, and July and August. Later, it tends to be more sweet, a larger ear, a little bit easier to grow. So here's the butter and sugar corn. Sawchuck Farm sits on 200 acres in Plimpton, complete with baby goats and family-friendly activities, including this corn maze. It's an eight-acre maze of field corn. The pattern changes every year. Owner Scott Sawchuck is a former geologist. He designed his 2021 maze to represent the Keeling Curve, a graph depicting how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. Sawchuck keeps the maize far from his fields of sweet corn so they don't cross-pollinate. Turns out farmers need a lot of perfect stalks for harvesting. You can see the silk's already been dried up and that's one of the reasons uh, that you know that you can pick it is you have a brown silk. We only pick one ear per stalk, it's just that top ear that is the best. The other ones might be dry on the tip or not really marketable. Peeling away these silky threads can be a hassle, but we wouldn't have corn without them, explains Sawchuck. At the top of the stalk of corn, we have the tassel, and that produces pollen, and the pollen goes down to the hairy part coming out of the ear of corn, which is called the silk. Those silks are actually uh, small pollen tubes that are connected to the individual kernels of corn and fertilizes each seed. There may be 800 silks in that ear of corn. Right into the oven. I think one of the keys to cooking corn is uh, less is better. If you're boiling it, three or four minutes in the boiling water is more than enough. You want that real nice crunch and sweet flavor. For chefs, corn is a versatile ingredient with endless possibilities. Sweet corn risotto with seared sea scallops, corn salsa with grilled chicken. These dishes are the creations of Peter Davis. He's executive chef at Henrietta's table at the Charles Hotel in Cambridge. I really like to keep things simple and let the food talk to it about itself. Corn has great flavor and you shouldn't try to mask that sort of stuff. Celery and bacon. One fixture on Henrietta's table's menu, corn and crab chowder made with a base of onion, celery, bacon, and chicken stock. We're gonna add just a little bit of flour to help thicken the soup. And I add just a little bit of turmeric powder for flavor and color. Followed by potatoes and freshly roasted corn shaved off the cob. And we'll let that just come up to a boil and then we're gonna puree it, almost like a creamed corn. Mmm. You taste the corn, you taste the sweetness, but then there's all these other flavors are just bursting out. It's awesome. As that's, well. That's the goal. Oh my gosh. Another corn classic may sound familiar, says pastry chef Danny Angelopoulos. A hasty pudding traditionally is nothing more than a porridge that is a combination of cornmeal and water. Dates back to the colonial times. Add some native spices if available, and that's what they would eat. Hasty Pudding is synonymous with Harvard University's celebrity-filled Hasty Pudding Theatrical Awards. 
And in those hasty pudding awards, we serve this hasty pudding, and it's been one of the most popular desserts in the menu. I am sold. Let's do this. Chef Angelopoulos boils milk and brown sugar. In a separate pot, he combines freshly ground cornmeal with spices. We've got some ginger, some nutmeg, and some cinnamon in here. And I'm going to add a couple eggs to this. Hasty pudding should be made quickly, as its name suggests. This dessert is best served warm with maple syrup, granola, and a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Great, right? Move over chocolate vanilla pudding. Hasty pudding is coming after you. <laughs> and some other fun facts about corn. The type of corn most often used to make popcorn is a different variety from the typical sweet corn that we eat. In fact, it's not soft enough to eat off the cob. And corn ethanol is a biofuel that is being studied for its use in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Most of that ethanol is made in the Midwest, close to the large farms that produce so much corn. Up next, Ted wants to know, did the pilgrims eat corn on the cob?